Oxford and Cambridge are two of the leading universities in the world, and many students dream of studying medicine there. However, you can only apply to one of them, which leads to the dilemma, which one should you apply to and why? And the obvious answer is Cambridge. Just kidding, in this video we'll be comparing all things medicine between Oxford and Cambridge, including the application statistics, the admissions process, the course structure, and what it's actually like to study in the place. We're also going to talk about whether Oxbridge Medicine is the right option for you. Let's get into it, but if you don't know me, just quickly, my name is Rohan, and I'm a fourth year medic studying at Cambridge. So first, let's run through the application statistics for Oxford and Cambridge for medicine. So in Oxford, for the 2021 admission cycle, there were 1,864 applications to study medicine, and they made 161 offers. This equates to roughly 1 in an 11.5 chance of receiving an offer for each applicant. For the 2021 admission cycle in Cambridge, there were 2,022 applications to study medicine, and 284 offers were made. This equates to roughly a 1 in 7 chance of receiving an offer. So the statistics suggest that Oxford is more competitive for medicine than Cambridge. This is because they have a similar number of applicants, but the cohort size is a lot smaller in Oxford than in Cambridge. But please don't be put off by the application statistics and think just because Cambridge is statistically less competitive, then you should apply to Cambridge. Because firstly, if you're good enough, you'll get in no matter how competitive it is. And secondly, it might be that admissions process at Oxford may play to your individual strengths more than the one at Cambridge. So let's talk about that next. Both Oxford and Cambridge have a similar application process for medicine in that they both have high grade requirements, they require you to sit the BMAT exam, and they have science-based interviews. In Oxford, they place a strong emphasis on the BMAT score for shortlisting candidates for interview. The way they weight it is section 1 is 40%, Section 2 is 40% and Section 3 is 20%. And in calculating the Section 3 score, they value the actual content score, so the number, as double compared to your quality of English score or the letter you get. And there's no BMAT cutoff score because your score is compared to other applicants in that admission cycle. And basically, they convert the BMAT scores into a common percentage which they use to compare between candidates. And they all have this explained nicely on a web page, which I'll link in the description box for you to check out. Oxford recommends that the applicant should be working towards a 6 in sections 1 and 2, but I know people who have gotten in who got lower scores than that. I've left a Google Sheet below which shows the average BMAT scores of applicants and offer holders broken down by college in Oxford from 2019. For candidates applying for Oxford not shortlisted but are borderline, then the GCSE scores are considered. From the website, it seems like they consider both a grade 8 or 9 at GCSE as an A star. And according to the website, the 2020 cohort, offer holders tended to have about 10 A stars at GCSE. Oxford aimed to shortlist 425 candidates for interview, which means they interview about 25% of all applicants. This is much lower than in Cambridge, and it means that there are about 2.5 candidates interviewed per place. At Oxford, you typically have interviews at two different colleges spread over two or three days, I think. Therefore, most applicants will have three to four interviews. Cambridge are less regimented with their shortlisting process. They take a holistic approach to applications, which means they consider all parts of the application, and they do not have specific BMAT cutoff scores or GCSE requirements, but obviously you want to be aiming as high as possible in these areas. As a guide, there was a freedom of information request for the 2021 admission cycle on the BMAT scores for Cambridge applicants, which I'll link down below. And I also found this other website which attempted to analyze BMAT scores comparing Oxford and Cambridge applicants. I'll just take a pinch of salt when you look at their findings because I'm not sure what methods they use. Cambridge interview about 80% of their applicants, which means there are about five or six interviews per place at Cambridge, if I'm doing my maths correctly. This suggests that performance at interview is relatively more important in Cambridge compared to Oxford. Each candidate has two to three interviews at one college at Cambridge on the same day. This means that the interviews are less spread out in Cambridge compared to Oxford, and the typical offer for Cambridge is A star, A star, A, whereas for Oxford it is A star, A, A. It would depend which admissions process suits you depending on your preferences and your individual strengths and weaknesses. For example, if you feel confident about doing well in the BMAT, then Oxford might be a smart option given their emphasis on BMAT score for shortlisting candidates. If you feel like you excel at science interviews, then Cambridge might be a better option. Some people will like how there's an extra interview at Oxford and that is more spread out, so this might buffer against a poor performance on a particular day, or if you had a, like a challenging interview, you may have 
more opportunities in further interviews. Whereas other people don't want to be under pressure for multiple days and would prefer to get all the interviews out of the way on one day as they do in Cambridge. But again, it's down to personal preference. Anyway, let's move on to talking about the course structure. So the course structure is very similar at Oxford and Cambridge with a clear divide between preclinical studies in years one to three and clinical studies in the hospital and clinics in years four and six. You also get the chance to do an intercalation in year three, and this is why it's a six year course rather than a five year course. This involves taking a year out of your medical studies to do another subject, and you get a BA degree from this year. Both Oxford and Cambridge make use of small group teaching. This is one of the best things about the courses as you're typically in a group of only two to three students. So there's opportunity to ask questions and to go deeper and to really try to understand a topic. These are called supervisions in Cambridge and tutorials in Oxford. You also get set homework such as essays from these sessions. So they do make you work quite hard as you're writing two to three essays a week on top of lectures and practicals in your first and second year. There are a few differences between the courses. Firstly, regarding intercalation. In Oxford, you're restricted to choosing subjects that are closely allied to medicine. For example, like pathology or neuroscience. In Cambridge, you still get these options, but you can also choose to do something completely different, like anthropology or linguistics. So if this opportunity is important to you, you might prefer applying to Cambridge compared to Oxford. Also, apparently the intercalation is four terms in Oxford, but only three terms in Cambridge. For anatomy teaching, at Cambridge we do full body dissection and we dissect one donor throughout the year. Whereas in Oxford, you don't do full body dissection, but you still learn from prosections, which are pre-prepared dissections. For some people, this makes Cambridge more appealing and personally reflecting on it. Dissection was definitely a good experience for my learning, but I would say it's not the end of the world if you don't get this experience because often you're restricted by how much you can see by the limits of your own dissection skills. And I found that you could see and learn a lot more from the pro sections which were prepared by the experts in the anatomy department. Regarding clinical studies, at Cambridge, many people used to transfer to London to clinical school. This transfer scheme has stopped, so now everyone does six years in Cambridge rather than three in Cambridge and three in London. As far as I'm aware, there's no such transfer scheme in Oxford, so everyone does six years in Oxford there too. Okay, now let's talk about what it's like studying in each place. And just a hint, there's more similarities and differences. For example, both places have a collegiate system, and this basically means the university is broken down into smaller colleges, which are essentially mini campuses. For example, I'm at Robinson College and my brother, he's at Queen's College. Yeah, these places have the accommodation and eating facilities and other social spaces and so on. Whereas the teaching is organized centrally. One exception to this is the small group teaching, which is organized by your college director of studies. Both places have short terms, so only eight week terms. So the year only really gets going in October and you have long holidays. And both Oxford and Cambridge have traditions which you may have heard about, such as punting and like the large balls at the end of the year. And you have these like formal dinners where Latin is spoken and people wear gowns very akin to like the Harry Potter movies. Fun fact, um, Oxford being the older university, I think it was founded in 1096, has more of these traditions. For example, in Cambridge, we only wear gowns at like the formal dinner and other like special occasions. Whereas in Oxford, they wear academic dress called like a sub fusk, which they need to wear for like exams and like interviews as well. So a few more traditions there. And interestingly, Cambridge was founded by some scholars which left Oxford after falling out. I think this was like in 1209 or something. In terms of location, Cambridge is more east than Oxford, but both are about an hour train away from London. Both are small cities, but Oxford is about 30% bigger and therefore it's a bit busier. People often say that Oxford is a university in a city, whereas Cambridge is a city based in a university. If you want to get a feel for the place, it's best to visit some of the colleges or come to an open day. Often people just have a certain bias for a place. For example, I visited Cambridge when I was quite young, so I think I was always slightly preferred it compared to Oxford. Or maybe you have family which went to one place and they really enjoyed it there. These things might influence how you perceive the place. And finally, let's discuss whether Oxbridge Medicine is right for you. The first thing to consider is obviously there's lots of great things such as like the small group teaching which is what I mentioned earlier and there's like the traditions which can be really fun and the preclinical to clinical divide that core structure suits people. I think the first thing to mention is the workload because the fact of the matter is medicine is already quite hard with lots of content to learn but at Oxford and Cambridge they make it harder by making you write lots of essays and even the exams are quite 
heavily based on essays. This may not suit everyone as, to be frank, not many people like essays and not everyone wants to work super hard at university. And that's fair enough, like there are so many other things you can do at university, like enjoy clubs and societies and meeting new people. And there's just so many opportunities which university life brings. The second thing to consider is not many people might appreciate the preclinical to clinical divide because in Oxford and Cambridge, you hardly see any patients for the first three years. Then you only have three years to learn all of clinical medicine. Whereas most other universities introduce clinical medicine much earlier on into the course. So you're going into the hospital, you're talking and interacting with patients. In that way, you have more time to develop the clinical skills needed to be a good doctor. From experience, I can tell you that the first three years did feel quite long not to see any patients. And it's sometimes a little bit embarrassing telling people on the wards that, yeah, I'm a fourth year medical student, but I need supervision for even basic things like taking blood. But having done it, I am glad that I do have some foundational knowledge before stepping into the clinical setting. But this learning style may not suit everyone. And finally, maybe not everyone will like the old traditions of Oxford and Cambridge, and maybe you'd prefer a more modern university in a bigger city. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. You might want to check out my other videos in the Applying to Medical School series for more detailed advice for each stage of the application process. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. But anyway, take care, wishing you all the best for your application, and bye for now.